but my friends have given me different names, several names. Some call me stupid person, some call me foolish person, arrogant person, crazy person, because that's what I am. So today I would like to start from one question. What is Nepal famous for? Of course we know Nepal is famous for many things, but I am going to talk about only one thing that why Nepal is famous. Why Nepal famous for? Because Nepal is famous, very famous, for not being able to develop its economy and provide job opportunities for its millions of people. Despite we have so much natural resources, human resources, cultural diversity, and biodiversity. And today, the theme of my talk is how to find ways to develop the economy of Nepal and create enough job opportunities for the people. But before that, I would like to share my brief background. I was born in the mountain village. And when I was young, when I was sad, I didn't get much chance to go to school. The school where I went did not have any textbook, pencil and paper. It was in 7th, 8th grade. When I was in 8th grade, I got my textbook for the first time. Then, when I was in 9th grade, my father bought me shoes and I got to wear the shoes for the first time. And I still remember that it was very difficult for me to figure out which shoes goes to which kid. But I learned it. After I finished my total education, you know, I did not go to, I did not go to the college because my father did not have money, so I became a teacher. I taught in several schools for 12 years, and when I was 31 years old, there was a turning point. I decided to go to college by myself in America. Without knowing how to apply to the university in America, without having any money. But I became able to go to America as an undergraduate student to the university when I was 33 years old. Then, after that, I came back to Nepal. After I graduated from the university, I, come back in, I came back to Nepal. I didn't know what I could do in Nepal. So, I went to my village and I had to start school, high school, and I became a volunteer teacher. Then with the community to started many projects like I have shown in the slides. Those projects were for community development in the field of education, in the field of health, income generation, tourism, and many more. I just would like to show some of these slides that will actually give you some ideas what I was doing. So we started yard farm, we started yard and the cow breeding farm camping ground for the traders. We started even fishery in the mountain villages. We started cheese making, jam making, and paper making, and also handicraft making projects, and sold those handicrafts to the traders. We started bee fitting, you know, mushroom farming, you know, community trading, eco trading program, and we also have built, you know, zero carbon emission lodges in the mountain. So that the laws are over there. So, while I was doing these things, I also did two funny and a crazy thing. The first one was to build computers in wooden boxes. I taught villagers how to assemble computers in the wooden boxes using you know, spare parts donated by the people from around the world. We built many computers like this and gave it to the uh, people. We did it because we did not have money to buy new computers. So, second thing I did was to build a wireless network in the remote mountain village and bring internet in the village. Because that time people even didn't know what internet is. They had never heard about the word internet, but we started that around 2000. And these are the pictures of those, you know, set up. The relay stations uh, to connect the villages in the mountains. So, this is what I did. <coughs> so far, we have connected about 200 villages. We are still working on it, and people are using the internet for e education, e health, you know, digital literacy program, communication, e commerce program. So, that's what people are using it. 
So during these early things, I had many international awards and recognition. Some of those awards and recognition are there. For example, Jonathan B. Postal Service Award, Internet Hall of Fame, Honorary Doctor at Zingri from the University, you know, Ashoka Fellow, and the Raman Master's Award. Those are the things, I mean, medals I got. And these are the medals I got, and actually I have put those medals for share. If anybody is interested to buy those medals, I am happy to sell it and use the money for a good for the nation. So, after working for 25 years like this, I, listen, I learned two very important lessons in my life. The first lesson I learned is social work and community development is not enough for making a poor country like Nepal economically prosperous nation. We need to do more. Social work and community development works are good for the community, but it does not have to develop the economy of the country. And the second thing I learned is why Nepal is economically poor. Of course, there are many reasons why Nepal is economically poor. But the lesson I learned, the reason Nepal is economically poor, the most important reason is because Nepal never had and still does not have innovation. Nepal is too miser to spend money for nurturing the talented and innovative people of the country. And Nepal never tried to you know, capitalize and commercialize the innovative ideas of the people. And the lastly, Nepal never learned that innovation is the growth engine for the economic development of the country. And the reason Nepal has a huge trade deficit. As you we know, we have around 92 to 94 import, percent import, and 6 to 7 percent export. With this, this trade deficit, how can Nepal become a developed country? So we have to find ways to reduce this trade deficit if we really want to make Nepal a developed country. That's why we have established and we are running a national innovation center or Rashtri Avishkar Kendra as a non-profit platform to nurture the ideas of the innovative people and we are helping in four states. Step one, after, after we identify the innovative people, we provide them full financial support, space, tools and equipment and the mentor to help them accelerate their prototype designing. Then after they succeed, succeed then we provide them you know, more support to help them to develop the product. Once they become able to develop the product, you know, we provide them full support to secure their intellectual property rights, copyright or patent rights. And then at the last step, step four, we provide them support to get connected with the investors and help them to commercialize their product and help them to become entrepreneur. That's a step. And to achieve our goal, we have three approaches. The first approach is grassroots approach. That means we are supporting the people from the grassroots level, even if they don't have an academic background. The second approach is structured approach. We help the college students or students and the you know, college graduates or researchers or anybody industries who need help to design and develop some product that's the structural approach and the third approach is network approach what we are doing is we are encouraging and we are persuading the innovative people who are living abroad to come to Nepal and work, work with our innovators that's our approach we have now we have 10 ongoing projects we are supporting so we are supporting to develop medical drone to deliver medicines in the remote parts of Nepal. We are helping the students from agriculture university to develop alternative animal protein using black shoulder fire. We are also helping our team of students from Kathmandu University to develop you know solar thermal collector. And also, we are helping to develop some students 
a water filter and a treatment system that is very good for the rural areas of Nepal. So we are also helping uh, some developers to develop battery maintenance systems for e-rickshaws and uh, you know battery regeneration system. We are also helping people to develop you know e-commerce platform. We are helping to develop you know school management system. We are helping to develop you know electronic medical recording system and e-medicine systems. And uh, also we have a team who are working to develop incubators for the rural clinics that will help to protect the lives of the um, life of the children who born you know prematurely. And uh, we are also helping some people to develop solar cleaner of the street lights. We see that there are many solar street lights that are not working because they are gathering the dust. Here are the pictures of some of these you know, projects, medical drones we have developed and the, the one on the left is you know, solar uh, water treatment system, the one on the right is solar panel and uh, you know, solar panel cleaner, incubator, those are the pictures they have been doing. And some other innovative projects we have also selected. So there are some of those innovative products. For example, there are some people who are trying to develop electric vehicles that can even go in the mountain roads. That is that sounds very difficult, but they are trying to do it. We have been helping to develop on a wireless application to promote village tourism. We have, we have been you know helping to some of those people to develop that application and uh, you know, we have been in the discussion on finding ways to develop monkey chaser or wild animal chaser to help the farmers. We are also trying to develop a system to you know harvest the biogas from the sewage that is being dumped in Bhagmati and Vishnumati River in, in, in Kathmandu. So there are some of these you know designs that have been working on right now to develop how it is funded now? We have been getting support from many people. So far we have collected less than, less than one million dollars. Most of our donors are farmers, low income and middle income people, students and the teachers and, and laborers. And our goal is to collect about five million dollars. And we want to invest that money on some businesses and generate money to make this uh, innovation center sustainable. For that, what we are doing, what we are, you know, developing drinks from ginger and Himalayan herbs. Because ginger and Himalayan herbs are available here in Nepal. We are, you know, starting software company because we are software engineers. And we are also considering to, you know, uh, invest some money on tourism as well and, uh, you know, developing Himalayan mineral water, export quality Himalayan mineral water and crucial kit. And on the long term, we are trying to develop a 10 megawatt hydropower station to generate money to make the innovation center sustainable. How can we be involved with this? This project is not my project. This is the project of all our, our Nepalese people. So I would like to invite you to be involved with this project. You can be involved. You know, you can contribute your ideas and skills. You know, you can sign up to become a mentor for the young innovators. You can, you know, spend some time to promote this idea of innovation center using social media. You can also donate some money if you have or some materials for the development of the innovation center. And finally, you can be an investor. For those ideas that, you know, that the, the innovators become able to, you know, develop because we need investors. Right now, we are looking for some investors as well. So those are the different ways you can be involved in this. So the ultimate goal of this innovation center is to create freedom of job opportunities in Nepal. We have political freedom. But first, the political freedom is not enough to make the lives of people healthier, and uh, yes. So we need this freedom of job opportunities in Nepal. This is something we can do by ourselves. 
if we come together and work together, that's why I want to invite you to join National Innovation Center and let's work together and make Nepal a prosperous country in maybe 20 years or 30 years. Let me finish with this Chinese proverb that says, give a man a fish and you feed him for days. And teach a man to fish and you feed him for lifetime. That's what we are doing. We are trying to you know, make people to learn how to fish and make their life better and then make Nepal economically a prosperous nation. Thank you very much for your time.